Okay, guys, before I begin, I am not defending Doug Walker. I think that the Nostalgia Critic is a horrible human being. The people that the people that work for him work for him solely, solely to get a paycheck. And y'all can, and anybody can find me on that. I don't fucking give a shit. Block me, block me, Channel Awesome. I'm waiting for the day you block me. But, I'm going to talk as a former fan. The, you know, and uh, the thing about Ms. Pony is, he's he, he just another internet personality that doesn't understand that back in the day, before we knew about Doug's illicit, illicit things and everything he knew, the stuff that makes me angry, the... The Sailor Moon video to me was the most harmless thing ever. Like, yeah, there were a bunch of jokes about Doug making usual sex jokes. But let me, I'm gonna, we're gonna hit this right because, because the that the Santhar Pony, I gotta, I gotta do this because I'm not gonna stop you from making more videos about the Nostalgia Break, but I am going to make you understand one thing. Back then, we didn't mind it because, you know, a lot of people either found this funny back then because we could just laugh about this stuff without looking into the implications of what Doug is saying, granted, with everything that happened. You know, and just, just well, I'm going to get into this before we, I'm going to get into this and remember, I am not defending Doug, I am just defending the episode as a whole because... Really, I mean, I know this is going to be, this may be a piss poor argument, but I'm going to try my best. I haven't really ranted in a, I haven't really ranted in a long time, so I'm a bit rusty. I haven't debated with anybody for a bit long time, so I'm a bit rusty in that regard. But I want to explain something. To comprehend the movie in even the most basic ways. One major gripe that I had with the episode in particular is how he can't take the idea that it was trying to be a dark and gritty adult version of the animated movie, in spite of the very obvious fact that it was meant to be seen and understood by children. Of course, when the Change the Channel movement came out and they utterly refused to address the problems, I felt compelled to talk about them again, breaking down the Deadpool 2 episode detailing the absolute clusterfuck that was their way of distracting people from the document. A lot of people have been saying that we should just get over it because it's old news or it's not relevant anymore. Hey, I'll say one thing. To change the channel, to, the, to uh, one dude that was saying Zinematic Venom needs to get a life for talking about the change the channel movement, sir, go do something with yours. Hey. I'm, not, I'm not talking about Miss Amstar Plenty. I'm talking about that one dude that was like, that cinematic venom needs to get a life. Oh, it's okay. This is something I've been holding back for a while now. For that whole that one dude that was like, he needs to get a life, blah blah blah, blah because blah 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 blah. Look, people were mistreated. People didn't get paid. People were people were emotional. People were mentally abused. And y'all want us to sweep that shit under the rug. I can't do that. And no one else can. If y'all if y'all can, cool. You live in a world where you live in a world where you can just forgive people easily. Cool. I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm not gonna sit here and say you're wrong. Because you believe that. If you believe that, that's cool. I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna sit here and fight with people about this. But I believe that yes, Doug and the Doug and the and Michelle need to be held accountable for their fucking actions and doing that whole not sorry, not sorry while while Doug's little puppets nod along to the beat. Yeah, Malcolm Tamler, you guys are puppets to me, okay? Yeah, you know, like I mean, none of you guys didn't go, hmm, you know. Doug did all this stuff? I mean, should we really be working with them? I bet you guys didn't even... I bet you guys thought we were all... That these people were making it up and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm just gonna say that right now. 
Uh, Miss Emperor Pony, I'm not really doing this part on you yet, but I'm going to get to the point. But, listen, people were very hurt in this whole entire thing. And for you to make videos saying that people need to get lives, that people don't want to, people shouldn't keep this movement going, because Doug still hasn't apologized or, or said he's sorry, that's a, that's a dick move. Which, if, okay, let me, let me give you something. If it was you, if, no, 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 if it was, if it was a family member you knew, and someone was messing with them, messing with them for years, would you, would you sit idly by and let your family member or friend or whoever suffer in silence because, because, you know, everybody's like silencing them? Would you do that? Or would you, or would you, or would you tell, or would you help your, or would you help your friend or significant other or whoever and help them fight? Sure. Sure. I don't know any of the channel awesome contributors that were in the whole uh, change the channel document, but I feel that they did have an injustice put on them. But they had to deal. They had to deal with it because they didn't want. They didn't want to. They didn't want to lose what they had. You know. You guys. Th you guys think it's just easy. You think it's just like we're just doing this for views, motherfucker? Okay, let me talk. Let me tell you a little something about me. Whenever I talk about this dog trick, I don't do this for fucking views, kids. Hi. Um, you know, I think the point you need to make clear is that at the end of the day, when we watch Miss Advocate before all this happens, we I'm... watch him because we. I know. We enjoyed what he had. Honey, honey, we didn't know I'm anything. At, I'm not at that part. Of, I'm not at that part yet. I just want to say, with the I, with the change the channel. But you need to the point quick here. Honey. I'm going to. I'm going to. But I was just doing something I held back for a very long time. I know. Okay. Like I said, people were fucked with, and they should get justice for that. That's how I feel about it. Whether you whether you old whether you fans care about it or not, stuff happens. Whether you would like to believe that it didn't happen, it happens. Deal with it. Now, now with that now with that now with that out of the way, we're going to pick. I'm going to pick in. I'm going to pick pieces of Miss Am Miss Am Miss Amphro ponies video and Ms. Anthony, listen to me man. I don't hate I do not hate you. I do not hate you. But I didn't like how you were just going all oh, higher than thou on us. I mean it felt like that to me. She of course is very popular in school, obtaining all sorts of friends. Actually Serena was anything but popular. Outside of a few yeah, years, but... a okay. And getting along with other students as well as the teacher. Oh, but according to Doug, she must be popular because she's pretty a sin and dumbest. Okay. okay, now. About this. Okay. Okay, let's be let's be real here. Does Doug do any research on Sailor Moon? Hell no. Because honestly, you don't come you don't come for a nostalgia break for for in-depth research, because we got loads of people that can do that. Doug is a bona fide and unadulterated, I mean, the nostalgia Creek is a bona fide and unadulterated clown. The he's an idiot that we all enjoy watching. He's supposed to be... Especially who makes fun of things that we all watched as little kids, and honestly... Take a date or jab at what we all make fun of as adults about, and you know? Right. Basically, as little kids, we watch things and we don't understand them, but the thing is, even though as adults we should know more, he's a bit of an idiot about things, you know? That was the whole point. I feel like that was the 
one playing the video. You're like, I feel like, yeah, Doug showed his crotch. Well, did you see his? Did you see his? Did you see his? Did you see his dick and balls flopping around? Did you see that? No, he had his pants on the entire time. Yeah, so I don't get the point of why you're angry at that. Dude, let me tell you something that's sick. Look up Paul and Amy. That's sick. People, people, dude's going after underage kid. Dude's going after underage, like, going after teens that are underage. That's sick. This nostalgia Creek video is ultimately harmless. Inoffensive. And it's not really... Uh, believe us when we say we're not exactly defending Nostalgia Critic on anything he's done. We're just defending the video because, yeah, it is practically harmless. I mean, there are people out there who still enjoy Nostalgia Critic, and we understand that he's never going to get the justification deserved at the end of the day for what he's done. Yeah. So, he still writes about how what happened. Well, still keeps we'll keep still waving the change the channel flag as long and as hard as we can. But the episode itself is harmless. The jokes that Doug make, the jokes that Doug makes is harmless. The fact of the matter is, I just when I look at your video, I just see a guy who's just pissed off. Instead of just instead of just breaking down. Instead of just breaking down the episode step by step, it feels like it feels like you're more angry with the way the with the way the episodes are done than just going at than just going at the episode. Yeah, because uh, okay. to a fourteen year old girl. Yeah, forgot that version. Yeah. Ninja. I mean, I feel like, I, I, I haven't seen this video, honey, but it sounds like the big problem here is that he's overanalyzing a video that Nostalgia Critic made a long time ago, long before the situations came out, that honestly, he's overreacting to it. And he's overreacting to jokes that we all laughed at, genuinely. And. We got entertained by. It. And let me let me get one of the clips here. Let me see if I can find it. So, sorry guys, I'm like trying to find this. Hold up, hold up. That you watched, which I'm really starting to doubt at this point. You would have been able to answer your own question. Maybe you're just too blind as a bat to even notice. So after that, we get to the scene where Serena learns how to use her powers after talking with Luna. Try to find the clip. Luna is sexy when she's transforming. He's feeding into the belief that while men are sex crazed, no matter how. No. Look at this. Look at this. I, I don't know, Miss Everybody. I don't know how you grew up, but when we were all teenagers, when we were all teenagers, like, Sailor Moon was like some sort of awakening when we were all hitting puberty. That's what Doug is right here in this. He's a teenager. The joke is, we were all horny motherfuckers back in those days. That's the joke. That is true. Sailor Moon was a fapping off material. There's a reason why it got heavily censored here in America because of that. And that, and I'm not saying we got to it now. I'm saying when we were, I'm saying when we were teens, when we were not even adults, we were we were hitting puberty hard. And guess what? Guess what was there? Sailor Moon. We were all turned on by it, and we didn't know why. You guys don't understand that kind of crap. I don't know if you understand that. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I can't, un I don't know your actual, I don't know your actual, like, your, your, when you lived and your upbringing and all that. But from for a lot of us, that's what it was. And Doug is making... Doug is making a joke about that because we were all horny. Because my girlfriend was, I was. Okay. 
We all get horny. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And it's something to make fun of it. At times. Because, hey, anime really was a good introduction to, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And you know what, Doug, making fun of that is a great way to actually, you know, what good didn't have a crook on NDMO? Mm -hmm. You know, Tuxedo Mask. To be honest, I don't know a single girl out there who didn't have a crush on Tuxedo Mask. The white Tuxedo Mask. Okay, and several other guys who were also in the 90s. In fact, yeah, what Nostalgia Critic's saying here is kind of true. And in fact, there's a lot of girls I know who had crushes on Tokyo Mew Mew guys. And, and you said, yeah. and you said he would, you know, why do you put Sailor Moon on his hottest, sexiest woman top, top fit, top twelve when you know Sailor Moon was on, when Sailor Moon was only fourteen? Well. Well, I got, well, made, this isn't really an actual explanation, but here's what I can gather. Like, he's the nostalgia critic. You know, calling upon nostalgic memories of the past. That's how it used to be, right? Sailor Moon for, <laughs> Sailor Moon for, uh, like, Sailor Moon for us was hot because when we were teens, that was a nostalgic moment for a lot of us. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Well, so she was probably the most, you know, closest thing to being, you know. I know, and I know dudes who would, who still remember fondly of the days when they would look at Sailor Moon and Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Venus and Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mercury, Jared, Jared, uh, Pro Jared ruined Sailor Mercury for me, but like I, like every other. Every I know other, a lot of girls who wanted to be Sailor Moon, Sailor Jupiter, or Sailor Venus, and I know someone who desperately wanted to be Sailor Moon at the end of the day. And I know a lot of chicks that were way horny for. For all the Sailor Scouts, don't even ask me how I know that. Because I'm not going to tell you. You just mentioned that. Come on. Let's make some room for the other 90s cliche people. Come on. <laughs> just saying. There's Tokyo Mew Mew, and there's Witch, and there's the Wink Club. Oh, God, honey. Have you ever seen the Wink Club, guys? They kind of hot, if you know what I mean. Take down the form of Godzilla. I watched a lot of them. Series over, series I had to catch up. This was actually the fault of bad translation because in the original mm. Japanese version, it's called a disguise pen. It doesn't just transform her Sorry. into literally anything. <laughs> it was only ever used for disguises to keep herself hidden to better complete missions. I can kind of understand making this mistake. Just I'm totally not looking at them right now. Thing. For the grand majority of the review, Doug only ever seems to go exclusively by the deep dub, without any consideration for the Japanese version. You anyway, continue, honey. Again, dub of a Japanese again, I can't, I can't make you understand my point well enough, because you have your heart set on hating Doug. Trust me, I hate the man, too. It ain't even, it ain't even a contest of how much I hate the man. But... I can remember when I saw this episode and thought it was pretty funny. Because yeah, you were like... Because it's way on all of us. Because you said, were you all distracted by his unfunny jokes to not notice this problem? How does a brony from 2019 pick up this problem before anybody else does? Because he didn't... Like, to me, it wasn't like an actual factual... It wasn't like an actual factual, like, Doug wants to fuck the Sailor Scouts. It was more of a joke. And yeah, you could say, oh, well, you're using that just a joke, just a joke thing. Because that's what it is, man. I feel like you're taking it way, I think you're taking, when I look at this video, I feel like you're taking it way too far, way too personal. Because, man, if we want to end up review, of something. We don't go to the nostalgia critic for that. 
we got so many anime YouTubers that can do that, and so many people that do retrospectives of Sailor Moon. We got them. Doug has always been what he's always like. The nostalgia critic has always been one thing: a clown. And nowadays, I you know now that I'm not a fan anymore, I can see past the jokes and really see how unfunny he is. But I can still look at this episode and still find things that I think are funny. You may think I'm a garbage. laugh at maximum overdrive. You may think I'm a you may think I'm a garbage human being. You may think I'm the worst person in the world. You may think I'm the most I'm I'm a motherfucker that should be on so many FBI watch lists. It ain't even funny. But at the end of the day, I remember why I like the Nostalgia Critic episodes. I remember the jokes I loved. I remember the things I used to enjoy about the Nostalgia Critic. Because those feelings are still there. But they get overwritten by my absolute disgust of Doug Walker. Because I don't... I hate him. The fact that he was like... Well, you know, people are always trying to make up stuff about, you know, us and all that stuff. And he was on national TV. Bomb motherfucker looking like a naked mole rat. Basically lying and saying that everybody's making stuff up about him. When really, all the stuff was founded on truth. Yeah, I hate Doug. I hate Doug. I hate Doug. And maybe... I, maybe I should disconnect the nostalgia critic from Doug Walker, but it's hard to. For Very me, difficult on your end, but not so difficult on mine. For me, it's hard to. Because all I see is that bald ass 30 something <laughs> motherfucker who let all, who let the people who were his friends down because. He didn't care. And with us fans, he didn't care about apologizing. He didn't care how all of this was fucking with all of us when we were all fans. He didn't care. He just kept pushing. And that's why I'll never forgive the man for what he did. But still, I guess when I really think about it, this episode wasn't the worst ones. The later ones are bad, but these, the these actually had care put in them. Yeah, that's back when he gave a damn, or started, or still kind of gave a damn, but was starting to show that he didn't give a damn. Mm-hmm. This Amber Bunny, I can't tell you to think the way you think. I can't tell you. To be, I can't tell you to think like me. Or be, you know. I can't tell you to laugh at the same jokes I laugh at. I can't tell you to just forget about it because you're not gonna forget about it. Hell, I have rants where I don't. I have rants where people wrong me and I never forget about it. Every time I think about it, it pisses me off even further. I don't hate you. <laughs> But you're gonna ask her again. It's a her, right? No, he's a dude. I don't hate you, man. I don't. Literally. The last thing I want is another fucking internet fight on my hands. Dealing with another. Dealing with another reviewer that doesn't really understand where I'm coming from. But. The thing I want to say is. You're berating us all fans like we're just, like, we, like, we're the ones to blame. Like, we're the ones that start, like, we're the ones that just thought that this was just so unfunny. We thought that this was so funny, we didn't understand the problems. Because back in those days, we had more important things to worry about. I did. Mostly. I don't know about you, but mostly, and sometimes... I wanted to just watch Nostalgia Critic to have a few laughs. Okay? 
it would be nice if she could res he could respect the fact that people have different tastes in humor than he does. And trust me, I and that sense of humor tends to prefer that we can laugh at something nostalgic critic has genuinely made that does basically it does make us laugh because we had a different childhood than he does, perhaps. Even if he has had a similar childhood in us, it doesn't mean that we can't laugh at something. That's the thing that I honestly find that's a bit troubling these days. People are policing each other's laughter and telling us what we should and shouldn't laugh at. Oh, this is offensive. This is this. This is that. Why are you people laughing at this joke or this thing? Here's the thing. We should be free to laugh at what we want to laugh at, even if the context is, you know, who are you to put a context into something that clearly is meant to be comedy? Sometimes the context of something can mean something different to someone else. That's why it's called comedy. And that wasn't sometimes saying that all jokes of us were... Land, and that wasn't sometimes saying, jokes... And that wasn't saying all of us were misogynistic. He's saying that we're all horny motherfuckers back in the day. Some people, some of us, kind of look back on our our adolescent horniness, and we just go, "Fuck, that used to be me." Hey, you're not the only one who's horny here. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Hell, there's some things that we all regret. While being, that is true. While being horny. When we were teenagers, I ain't no different. But I feel like you're just trying to attack like the fan base who doesn't even care about what you gotta say. You know these these fucking these fans now they ain't gonna care. Like remember, I began the video talking about that one dude who told Cinematic Venom to get a life because on him because. We're not allowed to talk about the shit that Doug has done that he, the people he's wronged and the people he hurt. We're not allowed to talk about that to these people because they don't want to hear it. And I'm glad you're bringing stuff to the, to people's attention. I'm glad you're doing that. But you can't, you can't berate all the fans just because they watched it back in the day and they literally found this kind of funny. I did, and he did, a lot of us did. Because let's just say because, because let's just say we needed those laughs. Okay? I didn't come to the nostalgia Creek to look at detailed reviews by a person that knew what he knew. If I wanted that, I would have went to Anime America or any of the other anime channels. No, but I come to the Nostalgia Creek simply to laugh. To, to laugh my... F I came to the Nostalgia Creek back in the day to laugh. To laugh my ass off. To forget about my troubles for just one minute. And just enjoy. And just enjoy shit. Just enjoy it. Trust me, I'm the most critical... And trust me, I'm the most critical motherfucker around. I ain't gonna sit here and pretend I'm not. But even I can remember a time where I didn't wanna where I didn't wanna freaking just 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 wanted to let Doug have it in the most biggest argument I have. But I remember a time where I wasn't like that. Where I wanted to be just like the man. And in my own way, I kind of do still, but in my own way now. But, hey, I can't tell you how to feel, dude. Yeah, it's not our place to tell you what to laugh at. You have to find some little laugh at yourself. I mean, seriously, telling people what to laugh at isn't really your job. It's no one's job. We find what's funny for us. And insulting people and telling them that you shouldn't laugh at something isn't right. Yeah, I know. I mean, 
I know, saying that Doug is just a clown, is a big old cop-out, and I could have said more, but that's what it basically boils down to. The dude was a clown back in the day. When we all could stick. When we could like his jokes. He was a clown. He wasn't supposed to be a detailed anime reviewer. I mean, if the Toonami episode basically shows anything, is that the man didn't really watch a lot of anime. Yep. His his little his little staff of puppets did, but not him. Again, none of us came to Nostalgia Creek for just in-depth reviews. They were just little funny. It was about a man who screamed and yelled and acted like a complete fucking cartoon character. Now, there are times when he does go in death, like he really does do his homework. But I will admit, this is a bit of a cop-out in and of itself, honey. I think I remember one time someone actually saying that he is an actual, you know, he calls himself one, you know? A clown or a reviewer? A reviewer. But so, there's a difference between calling yourself a reviewer and actually being one. Yeah, to me, Doug is more of a fucking clown just making people, just making people laugh and making those newer fans giggle like little schoolgirls and at the in, at night, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And sorry for the metaphor. I know that sounds a little weird and sus, but you know. Mm-hmm. But like I'm trying to tell you, I'm not trying to defend Doug. I'm not trying to defend Doug from what he did in the in the few from what he what he's doing in the present. I'm just defending an episode that I still remember as pretty fucking funny. Again, I'm going to say this one last time. The sex jokes, the teenage shit, the, you know, the skits where he was a teenager and he was being controlled by his wang. Because that's what puberty is. That's how puberty kind of feels like to certain dudes. Like, yeah, yeah. You're being controlled in a way. Like, you, you, you're feeling feelings that you shouldn't be feeling, but it's happening. You can either feel weird about it or just fucking get into it. That's what those jokes were illustrating to me. But hey. I'm done here, man. I got video. I got other videos to do. Yeah, you know. Other projects to get to, and I'm not using that as an excuse. But that's all I really have to say on the matter. And this answer, Pony, if you hate me, oh well, so be it. Because I, you know, I remember telling, you know, talking about my actual opinion to another reviewer, and she just couldn't, she just couldn't take it. And I don't want, I don't want you to be like, oh. I don't want you to get your I don't want you to get mad or get your feelings hurt or us fighting. Because I ain't about the, I ain't about that YouTube life. I'm not about that YouTube life anymore. I'm not about fucking dragging fucking fights out for everybody to see. If you wanna debate me on this, we'll do a video. We'll do a video together if you are so inclined. But I'm not gonna just keep I'm not gonna do what I used to do because that's not me anymore. I'll see, but I'll see you guys later. And what did you think about this whole thing? Am I right? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think Miss Anthropony is right? What do you think? I, well, from my point of view, here's the thing. From my point of view, the Sounds of Critic did do a lot of things that are bad, but we all have a right to what we laugh at. Mm -hmm. That's my point of view. And if someone judges you terribly for it, that's not their place at all to be, to begin with. We are all different by proxy. And 
what makes one person laugh will definitely not make the other person laugh. After all, dark humor exists for a reason. And Sailor Moon, well, of course, in my opinion, I think that was back in the day when the nostalgic critic actually put in a lot more effort in his humor than he would nowadays. I mean, today his humor is far more dry than uh, he did. Have you seen the Mary day. Poppins review? That shit. I looked at the first five minutes of it and I was just like, I'm done. I'm so fucking done, dude. No, fuck this. That's what I mean. It's it's not it's not good anymore. Uh, but back in the day, like with Sailor Moon, it was actually pretty good. That's why I think it's overstepping the balance. I mean, no one knew what was going on back then. So, judging everyone for liking it, why do that? That's wrong to me. Because it's a person's right to like whatever they want. Let alone be a part of something. In the present day, Yes, it's a little questionable if someone still likes Nostalgia Critic, and I think it can still be left up to a person's choice because, yeah, maybe the person doesn't know Nostalgia Critic did those things. But it's still up to the person to choose whether or not to like his work or not. It's like an artist. I know you think I make artwork. If Sorry, a person likes my it. artwork and thinks it's improved or, you know, not improved, that's still their choice whether to like it or not. And I'm not going to judge them for it. And it's the same thing with nostalgia critic. I'm not going to judge a person for it, so why should Miss Anthro come to Because nostalgia critic went and did some terrible things. Should we do the same with Mona Lisa? The guy who made it did good things. No, we shouldn't do that to everyone. Everyone's guilty of something, but their artwork should reflect what we think. Yeah. In my opinion. And that's why comedy is so subjective. I mean, who we want, what we want. So, in my opinion, I agree with you on this. Because at the end of the day, you are right. Comedy is up to the person's taste. And at the end of the day, what he said about Sailor Moon being sexy were just, they're just fucking jokes. You know? It's not like he was actually saying he wanted to go out and get someone with the same age as Sailor Moon and go, you know, go and take them for a jolly good old time. They're just you jokes. Know what I'm Since um, Sailor Moon was 14, and he put in Doug way, way back in the day when he was real, when it was really back in the day when he still lived in his parents' house, and he put Sailor Moon on the top 11 sexiest, animated sexiest characters. He said that that was wrong, and I'm like, Dude. it actually isn't considering Sailor Moon was designed and drawn to be sexy and the age of consent in Japan is actually 13 so Miss Anthropony we- is a little bit in the wrong because he, he does not know the age of consent in Japan look it up yourself you're going to be a little bit shocked there hey you're going to be freaked out little- huh? and, and there's and you know we got there's a whole bunch of things going on in Japan uh, dealing with that law that's a little questionable and I don't want to talk about it because oh I'm. Oh my god, that's a reason why we can't exist. And we don't we and we ain't crossing that line. No, we do not touch the lollicons. Do not touch the lollicons. The lollies are only for pets. Yes, yes. They're only for head pets. That's an crew out there. It's not valid because here in the Americas, Sailor Moon 
I think they aged her up within the com within America just so that they could avoid it or they didn't mention her. But yeah, in the manga and in the original, she's 13. However, that's because in Japan, it's legal. Yeah. It's legal in Japan, not in America. But you know what? Yeah. That's the point. But, you yeah. Know? but yeah, I can understand why he thinks it's creepy. <laughs> Trust me, I get you. I get you, man. Yeah. It's for me too, you know. You know, there's some points where they draw like what is it, teenage girls, so freaking young that it's so disturbing. I'm like, oh, Japan, oh, Japan, you've got what, 15 year old girls dressed with what is this? Why are these girls so young looking that they look like they could pass for like a like my child? This ain't right. <laughs> or the fact that some lollies really look like they old, then they they're younger, but they they dress them like they older. It's just it's weird and nasty. Just, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! There's this one anime where they have this kid with butt so huge, man. I'm like, kid, I don't want to be you when you hit my age. Like seriously, I know I'm big, but. I don't want to be you when you hit my age. And there's and there's this whole fucking argument about fapping to Kana from from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid because she's way older than she is. It, it, yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm a little weirded out by that. I don't care if she's like old as hell. I I just can't. I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, but that's the thing. They draw them sexualized for a reason. That's just how Japan is. So it's okay for us here to a point, as long as we age them up. I'm pretty sure there ain't gonna be no FBI and all that. Besides, they're fictional characters. What? Like, is Miss Anthropony one of those people who thinks fictional characters equate to real life? I mean, if, if unless they're, she's, he's like, uh, Paul and Amy. Like, uh, yeah, don't, don't talk about guy. that. Okay. Honey, don't talk about that man. I only referenced him once. I don't want to reference that man ever again. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying, is he like him? No, he's not. So he's, that, just, he's just another person that's just okay. pissed off at the nostalgia creek before it was cool, I guess. And he has, right. and he has a good reason to to pick apart his videos, but just for this one, I, I just can't pick up. I can't just say, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on this. Because I used to be on the other side. Yeah, I did too. I absolutely loved his quest for Camelot. That one made me start laughing. God damn it. He was so funny in that one. Let's see. Uh, Maximum Overdrive is another favorite of mine. I loved his humor back then. But nowadays, it's so dry and bland. It just doesn't elicit the same humor after what happened, and you can tell it's really gone south after what happened. So, yeah, I agree. And a lot of his old writers... He's were, not funny. And a lot of his old writers Not to left. say that he always was on the internet. A lot of his old writers kind of left. So, that's a thing, too. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that someone out there won't find this stuff funny. It's like with my writing. That's not to say that every once in a while one of my jokes I write won't hit a note. I mean, sure, I, I'm sometimes distasteful, but I do try to get good. And me, I'm cock joke, cock joke, cock joke. Cock joke, cock joke. Honey, you hit the distasteful area way too often. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm, yeah, but that's just that's me. That that's the kind of person I am. Sure, I may ble I may what blue, but I do it out of my own choice. I mean, I could make jokes about Trump and make you make you really think with my jokes, but nah, nah, I'll I'll leave the thinking for when I'm talking to, when I'm doing it. When I'm doing my uh, little Bugsy editorials. But I'll do the jokes. Whatever they may land on whatever. Because personally. Because personally. But do I. 
But, you know, I love Sailor Moon, and I love Sailor Moon, and I'm not going to sit here and just go, yeah, Doug was yeah. wrong for making those jokes. Nah, it wasn't really that bad. What I, the one joke I always had issue with is, like, Doug always said, us dudes don't know when we're getting hit on. I'm like, motherfucker, yes, we do notice. The only ones who don't notice are the ones who are dumb as rocks. Yeah, or unless they're in an anime hero. Yeah. Trust me, with I'm a gaming goddess, I'm fixing, I'm fixing that trope. Yeah, cool, yeah. But you know why it works, right? Yeah, I get you, I get you. But he was saying that all, he was saying that all of us do. But guys are girls. He just said, but he was just saying that all like dude, all girls, all like all dudes are oblivious to to chicks hitting on them. I'm like, not all of us are. Some of us realize it, and we, and some of us play dumb, for a multitude of reasons. You don't want to. You don't want to know. I've been in those situations, my friend. <laughs> oh, Mr. No Name does have a few stories to tell. I swear to you. Yep. But. Yeah, uh, but I'm gonna get out of here. We're just rambling at this point. See you guys later, and remember. <laughs> remember, I still fucking loathe Doug Walker. I hate everything that he's done. I hate the fact that his little puppets are, like, staying around him because they know they can't get any other jobs. Mm. I, hate I, hate the fact I hate the fact that people think that the Change the Channel movement is just us trying to get fucking views. I wish people could actually wake up Excuse and see. Me? Is that what they think about us doing that? Yes. And I wish some of them could wake up and actually see the world for what it is <laughs> rather than the little rose colored glasses and the subgroups just the start of just seeing the world the way they want to see it. But hey, I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to make people laugh and inform them from time to time. Because it also helped them out. That's the credo of this goddamn channel. Peace. <laughs> and remember. And remember, Doug Walker, if you're seeing this, fuck you with a rusty magic a dildo, you bitch. You slowless cuck. You bet. You Sorry. Chuck Norris love you Chuck Norris gay joke loving bastard. You biscuit eating you biscuit eating cunt. I want you to look at something. People are gonna look at that look look at this part and be like, why did you call him a biscuit eating cunt? It's an old it's an old it's an old reference of mine. You, you gotta, you gotta really know me to know that reference. Peace. See you guys later.